Hello, my name is Calvin Walden, and I am the application engineer here at Fiberfin. I'm going to talk about Ethernet networking using POF and show how simple it is for a home user or hobbyist to set up. Homeowners and contractors find that POF is easy to work with for retrofit installations, partially due to its small size compared to, say, copper Ethernet cables or coax cables, but also because it's generally more rugged, and as we're going to use it today, it's not going to have any connectors on it, which make it easier to pull through walls or conduit. It also does really well in environments where strong electromagnetic interference is a problem, such as radiology labs and clinics or hospitals, or industrial settings where machines use high current motors. Normally, when people think of Ethernet, they think of Cat5 or Cat6 cables like these, which are terminated using RJ45 connectors. And these are used for physical Ethernet standards like 10, 100, and 1,000 base T. There's a lot more Ethernet standards out there, some of which are for copper, some of which are for fiber. And today we're going to work with 100 base FX, which is Ethernet over multi-mode fiber. Just about all the equipment that you're going to encounter, though, isn't actually set up for Ethernet over POF, and we're going to have to use some specialized switches and media converters to set up a POF network. And when we do this, we're going to start with this industrial media converter, which is going to take our building's Ethernet and convert it to POF. Now, this is a ruggedized industrial grade Ethernet converter. It has a DC power jack, a familiar um, copper Ethernet port, and a fiber optic Optilock port. And on the back here we have two places to mount a DIN rail if we wanted to do that. Okay. So we're going to start by terminating the fiber. Each one of these is about a meter or a little under. Realistically, we can go up to 100 meters per run with plastic optical fiber like this. So we are going to use the LC RZR1 razor cutter. We could use others that will give us a nice finish, but this one has a feature for duplex fiber that you'll see in a second here. So we're going to go ahead and terminate the fiber. We're going to stick it through the duplex slot and cut it. That puts a nice finish on it. But then we stick it into the slot here. We cut it again, and that separates the duplex cord so we can insert it into the Optilock connector and do it for all the ends here. And again. Now that we have the fiber ready, we can start by making the first connections. We're going to start with this media converter here. And we're going to connect it to power, connect it to Ethernet, and to make the optical connection, we are going to pull that dust cap out. Separate the fibers just enough and push them into the connector and lock it down. And you'll notice that one of the two fibers is lit up. That is the transmit side coming from the converter and the dark one is the received side. That corresponds to the transmit side on the other device. Next we'll set up our Ethernet switch. We're going to be using two ports, so I'm just going to pull those out. I'm going to connect it to power. It's a pigtail that I made for the switch. So, and 
we match transmit to receive as we plug this in. Alright, now that we're connected, we can take a look at the activity lights on the switch and the converter. We see that the links are active and there's, there's a little bit of activity here. That final piece of the network from the switch to the computer, we're going to work with another media converter. This one is from Firecoms. It's a equally simple device as this one. It's got a copper ethernet on one end, power, and on the other end we have an Optilock connector. These media converters come with power cables that have a barrel on one end and USB on the other. This means that if you're connecting it to a spare USB port on a device like a smart TV or a cable box, you can conveniently power this using just that. Otherwise, a standard USB wall charger will work just as well. Let's go ahead and connect this. The media converters also come with a short little twisted pair of pigtail here. Plug this into the Ethernet port. USB power. Make sure that clips in there. And using our other Ethernet cable, separate that a bit. Connect this side first so we can see which side is which. And once again, we match transmit to receive here. And as I'm sliding it in, it already detects the connection. Make sure I've got it pushed in as far as it'll go lock it in place. And now we can see that we're connected to our POTH network.